a while ago I asked over on Instagram for some suggestions for um, like you know things that we could talk about here on YouTube things that I can write blog posts about and I had so many requests from people asking how you can incorporate more instruments in your elementary music lessons and can I just say I was so relieved to see this question because this is actually something that I struggled with so much starting out and honestly I still struggle with it today it is really easy for me to get caught up in singing moving listening to music and like notating music and doing all those things and forget about the instruments but the kids do not forget about the instruments and that's one of the things that they are really excited about. If you want to up the engagement in your classroom, the easiest way to do that is to add some instruments to your classroom. In this video, we're going to be talking about some easy ways that you can incorporate more instruments into your elementary music classroom to increase engagement, make sure that the kids are getting exposed to different things and just have a good time. Whatever you are teaching and whatever supplies you have on hand, there will be something in here that will apply to you. So even if you can't do all of them, depending on what kind of instrumentation you have, you'll have something that will be useful. So let's get started. Okay, first off is playing ostinatos. This is one of my favorite ones with the older kids to do, and it's a very simple way you can add instruments to like literally anything. So teach a folk song, learn the folk song, sing the folk song, and then play some ostinatos. They also can help you to get the kids engaged right off the bat. So a lot of times I'll teach an ostinato and then I'll teach the song afterwards and they'll play it on their bodies first. We'll learn the song and then we'll add instruments. So for example, I'm thinking of the song Star Festival. For this one, I like to introduce it with the ostinatos, the ostinati. I think I looked it up and both of them were correct. So take your pick. Um, ostinatos, um, I, I, now I'm gonna feel super self-conscious about that all of the things that we are playing i taught them those at first and so i would be like okay we're gonna play one two three four one two three four and then i'll start singing the song and if you don't know that song i'll just go ahead and sing it for you anyway it goes in the sky the stars twinkle bright the moon rustling in the night glittering sparks of silver and gold high above us we behold and then i'll go straight to the next one so we'll keep snapping and then we'll play ta ti ti ta ta ti ti ta and i'll get them to do that and then i'll start singing it and so we'll keep going with that so when we so we'll learn first just like body percussion learn the song and then we'll add the instruments to it and i'll introduce it kind of in the same way so i'll be like okay we're gonna have some people up here playing the triangles and I'll have a couple people playing the triangles, which they were already obsessed with the triangles and after that Super Bowl commercial, they're like even more obsessed with the triangles. And so I'll have the triangles come up and they play that one, two, three, four, one, two. And then we'll go through that. Then I'll add the second layer on. So I might um, play the ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta on the wood blocks. And so now we have two instruments and then whoever is left over the third time we play it is going to play on either like a xylophone or a drum and we play um, ta 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 and that's their pattern and then we'll get to switch and so that they get to play all the different things which will take up you know like pretty much a whole class and it's a really great way to really solidify a song you can get some of the kids who maybe are not super into singing will like really want to sing if you're doing all the extra stuff with the instruments so i highly recommend it then after you do that you can have the kids come up with their own ostinatos ostinati, on the instruments so you can have them get in groups and pick one ostinato or they can do multiple and to have that as an extension and a composition activity as well the great thing about this is it works with literally any folk song that you are teaching so whatever you're using in your classroom to teach already just add this on and you have a whole new lesson all right number two super simple ways to add instruments is going to be form lessons so this is one of my favorite things to do and this is great for all grades but i prefer it more with the younger kids with this one i will put out hula hoop and each hula hoop will be a section so green hula hoop is a blue hula hoop is b red hula hoop is c Okay. And then we'll listen to a song and the kids will play the beat on whatever instrument they have on that section. So I'm thinking um, one easy one for the little littles is Ballet of the Unhatched Chicks is A, A, B, A. So you can have A play and then B play and then A play again. Um, 
Another one that is longer, Rondo a la Turca, is a good one. And that one is A, B, C, B, A, B, Coda. Um, all of this, by the way, is in the matching blog post. So if you want all of that like written out a little bit better, you can click the link down below to check that out. Um, and then I can help the kids by walking around and conducting each of the different groups so they know when it's their turn to play. And then again, they can rotate so they can try different stations. You could do this with older kids. You could even have them like each hula hoop have a rhythm that they play. You could practice playing forte and piano you can practice crescendos watching the conductor you can practice how fast you play like maybe you have a student up front being the conductor and they can you know keep the beat and then they can change the beat to faster or slower they can bring in different sections all of those things are things you can do that are very simple although i guess now we're not talking about form anymore but you know you know so in the blog post, I have a couple of my favorite pieces to use this activity with, with their um, form written out so that you can see it really easily. Next up is one that I call rhythm breakdown. So this is basically where you assign an instrument to each rhythm. So like the wood blocks are playing the eighth notes and the drums are playing the quarter notes or whatever you want to do. Again, it's a great one because it's super versatile, it works with literally anything. The one I'm thinking of, actually we, we just worked on this song today, is with the song Love Somebody. This song is really cute and it goes, love somebody, yes I do, love somebody, yes I do, love somebody, yes I do, love somebody and it may be you. So this song is really cute. It has eighth notes, quarter notes, and sixteenth notes. So I typically do three sections. Again, I do it one by one. So I'll have some kids come up and they're playing the eighth notes. And then the next time we do it, I add in the quarter notes and stuff like that. Um, and then again, you can conduct the different groups. Each instrument is assigned a rhythm so they play that instrument when that rhythm comes and so they have to think about what the rhythm is they have to remember what type of rhythm it is they have to remember all of those things in order to do it this way i will leave a link to the love somebody lesson down below um because i talk more in depth about like how we do all of that in another video all right one of the simplest ways to do an instrument to add more instruments into your classroom is with instrument play-alongs or rhythm play-alongs. There are these marvelous people on YouTube that I admire so much because they make rhythm play-alongs and also body progression play-alongs, which we're not talking about right now, but rhythm play-alongs where you can click a button and it has like a whole bunch of rhythms and usually set to music and then the kids can just watch and play along with it and you don't have to stand there and hold flashcards and worry about it not being big enough for the kids to see and all of that so it is a game changer when it comes to practicing rhythms we use these all the time like somebody is using them every week pretty much um and it really just is so super helpful and this is also a good like sponge activity because it only takes a few minutes um or you can make it like last a long time. I like to have them do it once with their hands, either clapping or playing on their legs. Then they'll get the instruments and then we'll break it down and look at each frame and like practice each rhythm. And then I'll have them play it again. And usually then I'll actually notate like who is doing it correctly so that I can have an assessment as well. Next up is centers. I know you're like, Becca, are we gonna get through a whole video without you talking about centers? And the answer is no. No, we are not because that's that that would not happen. So in centers, this is a good way to play some extra instruments. Now, I'm going to give you the caveat of you have to be very careful what instruments you play during centers because in centers, by definition, you're not like standing over all the children watching them. So you might want to pick things that are a little more durable, you know, rhythm sticks. If you have those plastic castanets, like those are kind of hard to break. Think about, you know, what are things that you're willing. I actually have some like older instruments that I don't usually use, but I'll pull them out for centers because if they get broken, it's not the end of the world. So just, you know, be aware of that. But with centers, you can easily add an instrument activity and the kids will be so excited to get to play the instruments in a more like low key way where they kind of have a little more autonomy. So ways to do that, you can do a composition where the kids are making, you can have them like use rhythm manipulatives to make a pattern. You can have them write rhythms with like an expo marker or write them on a piece of paper or just take flashcards and play those. Um, 
Oh, that was my next one. You could give them flashcards and they can play those. They love flashcards because they like to make really, 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 really long rhythms. And so that's like one of their favorite things. Um, and then you could also have them play like a song that you're learning. So something we often do is I'll have like a xylophone station set up and that's the station that I hang out at so that I can keep an eye on everybody. And I'll have the, um, rhythms and letters or the notes on the treble clef of a song that we've been learning and so they're learning a song that we've been working on so they already know how to play it in their centers and that's just one of their centers and so that's a good way to you know sneak in a few extra rhythms you know in there also if you're looking for more ways to play instruments in centers or just centers activities in general i have a huge 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 huge, huge um centers ideas list freebie so i will link that down below and in that if you click on it it has lots of different ideas by types there's like a page for rhythm and a page for melody a page for instruments um and so it has tons of different ideas most of them are very low prep and if you look at it on the computer and don't print it out there's like links and so the links will take you to like blog posts and videos and some freebies that help you out with whatever it is all right, next up is kind of what I just said, but that's okay. And that is learning a song. So anytime, especially the older kids that we are working on a song, I like to have them figure out the song in small groups. So for example, um, my fifth graders are working on Closet Key, which is a really fun one. And so I have them figure it out. I just put up on the screen what we're learning and they have to figure it out in small groups. I do the same thing with like one of my, another favorite of mine with the third, second or third graders. Another favorite of mine with like second and third grade is Wolf, Are You, um, We Are Dancing in the Forest. And so that's a good one for So Me La and they can practice playing So Me La on the xylophone and they can figure that out. Or if you don't want to use the xylophone, you could have them do rhythm sticks or drums or, you know, any of those kind of things. I like to do this in small groups and then at the end, we'll all sing it together and play it together so that we're kind of like, you know, wrapping it up there. Um, next up is you can add more instruments by using books. So books are one of my favorite ways to add some instruments in just like easy ways to make it, you know, extra fun and be like, hey, look, reading is fun. Um, and I usually use this honestly with my younger kids. So a couple ones that I do, um, Rumble in the Jungle is a cute one. And so we read through that book with these little kids. And after each page that talks about a different animal, we use the chant, Rumble, Rumble rumble in the jungle and we'll read it through once where we say it and then maybe the next day we'll read it through again and they'll play it on the egg shakers or they'll play it on the rhythm six or something like that um another one around the holidays is there was no lady who swallowed a bell for this one at the end of each of the verses i'll have the kids just play the bells up in the air i'll link these down below in the description by the way an easy one you can add to anything is a soundscape so anytime that you are you know reading a book you can assign a different instrument to a different character or you can use the instruments to like create the scene so like you know if it's in the ocean like oh how can we make ocean sounds and those are fun things that you can do along with pretty much any book um next up is where the wild things are i love this book it's such a classic and i have a whole lesson that goes along with this in my tpt shop so i'll link that down below but with that like virtual field trip to the wild place um we assign different rhythms to every monster so each so like the white monster has a rhythm and the brown monster with the horns has a rhythm and everyone has a different rhythm and on each page they come up in different orders and so for each page we're playing the rhythms in different orders which just makes it really extra fun um and finally chicka chicka boom boom is a classic for the littles and pretty much every year we use this Ooh, ooh! i need to make sure that we do that actually next week i need to write that down anyway um so chicka chicka boom boom is one of my favorite lessons and we use that to work on quarter and eighth notes and so we use the book and then we'll figure out how to re um what how to notate um chicka chicka boom boom which is t t t t ta ta um and a couple others and then we'll read through the book and i will have them echo different patterns usually on castanets and so i'll keep the tricky part with this is keeping them to not play while you're talking so i have i'll we'll do hands on shoulders and then i'll pick up and play like chicka chicka boom boom and they'll echo after me will there be enough room and they'll echo after me so really fun i also have a video about that one so i'll link that down below for more information about that one all right friends so that's a couple ways that you can add instruments to your classroom and i didn't put this in here but i'm gonna add it anyway with the littles actually with anybody um you can always just keep the study beat 
so this is a bonus that's not supposed to be in this video but i'm adding it anyway here at the end um an easy thing to do like even my fourth graders were doing great big house in new orleans actually i did it with fifth grade too and so we, we were um we would sing the song and just keep the beat and then after we sang the song i'd put like a rhythm up on the board they'd play the rhythm we'll go back to keeping the beat with the song and that's again something that works with literally anything and it's just a really great way to incorporate more instruments more reading more you know just doing all the things so i hope that that was helpful and at least gets you started i really tried to focus on like things that were very versatile so you can add them to lots of lessons things that don't take a ton of time so you're not like having to rearrange your whole life and things that can work with a variety of instruments so i don't want to be like oh here is, you know all of the xylophones and you're like I don't have xylophones um so really tried to make it really like versatile in there if you have more ideas for instruments leave them down below because I personally need them so I'm sure other people do as well thank you guys for watching make sure you hit the subscribe button if you are you know wanting to get more videos like this and I'll see you next time bye <music>